Peace, everybody. It's your boy, JB. Now, this video is brought to you by Femora. Femora is a dope editing software that I've been using for quite some time, almost about two years. This right here is the new program um, that I'm giving you all. So you can go through the text. It has all different types of options that you can select, as you can see. Um, also, too, if you look on the side on the left, it has everything else on there from green screen, from frame to TV static, uh, and music, everything, man. There's nothing literally that you cannot find. And also, too, man, I just want y'all to enjoy it. And have a nice one. Welcome to another episode of The Wise Guys. I'm Kula Shakur. And I'm K-Life. Right now, we have my boy Spoken Reason. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, oh so we don't already got started. I mean, we don't got to get oh, started. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Let it roll. Let it roll. <laughs> Raw footage is only. Let's go. Uh -huh. yeah. It's been a wild day. Um, but I appreciate you for coming, man. All good. Yes, sir. Uh, so, first time I heard about you, you know, you was uh, making a lot of waves on, on the internet as far as on YouTube and on all those social platforms. Yeah. With um, just, for me, I heard from like the comedy end of it from you making skits and stuff. You put it on the table. You put it on the table. So what? You put a drink on the table. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, that's why I heard it from you. So, so what got you into into doing the skits and all that stuff? Uh, really, uh, well, well, first I started off doing spoken word. Mm -hmm. So I started off doing poetry. Sp spoken reasons is the name came from spoken word. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people ask me, well, how come your name sounds so educational you know <laughs> for a comedian? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, you know, I got to respect my roots. So gotcha. that's where that came from. So I came into the game as a poet. Yeah. I did that for like a year and a half, two years. And then, um, you know, when I decided to leave school that's when I got into comedy mm -hmm. so comedy came uh, I want to say slightly like a year a year and a half before I quit my nine to five gotcha. so so that and that all got birth in I say 2009 gotcha. but the channel started in 2008 so I'm 10 years in so yeah I'm going yeah so um <coughs> you say um Man, man, here you go, man. <laughs> Already messing up from the start. Here you what? go. <laughs> what? Um, so you, um, you do stand up? Yeah, I do stand up. And you do uh, skits? I, and I do poetry. And poetry. Yeah, skits. Yeah, play keys. I, I'm a jack of all trades. Yeah. 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 That's what they want to say. <laughs> go call it. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, just start doing that. poetry. Uh, well, really, <laughs> well, poetry came about because it came about uh, in 2007. I was in school, and I knew I wasn't going to finish. I only what? went. I, I only. See, I, I, I really only. I really only went to uh, Valencia Community College only because I wanted to get out of my city. Gotcha. That's it. So I don't tell. You know. You know. For everybody out there, if your if your if your uh, dream is to be a doctor, don't drop out like a dumbass. You know what I'm <laughs> don't do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm respect your dream, respect your passion. So uh, I had a different route. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, um, really, in 2007, I was sitting around, and it was a it was a girl I was talking to at the time. I remember I got a job. It, I had went without a job for like four or five months, and I really needed one. I got one, and I I think it was with, with like Prime America, Prime America, you know, the life insurance company. Oh, yeah. So I got that job, and then I said, Oh yeah, you know, I got the job, and then she said, Oh, I'm really happy for you, boo. Next time, next time you you can you can use that money. Uh, you can use that money to buy you some new pair of shoes. And she said, yup. But at that time, I was wearing the same pair of clothes and shoes for three years straight. Whoa. So that was a real crucial time. So I said, you know what? Let me go back to the drawing board. Yeah. I locked myself in a room for about four or five months, like mm -hmm. literally. Didn't yeah. walk outside. You know, I walked outside to go get something to eat. But yeah. other than that, it was inside the apartment, inside the room. And I, I, I told myself I wasn't going to walk out until I found out what I wanted to do. So I started signing up for all these different like community service program, mm -hmm. uh, uh, UCF events. Um, I, I just went on Google and just started, you know, searching, you know, just trying to find my niche. Yeah. That's how I, I discovered what the what the term niche meant. Yeah. Just just simply means, you know, finding what what's suitable for you, and you can use that to to Take execute you you your passion. Yeah. So yeah. that was just me at the time. <laughs> A lot of people they ask me, well, well, how do I get into everything? Look, man, how I started, I just went googling shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just it's google.com, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you are looking at, you know, one of the you know, one of the first front runners of the internet. So that's how I got into it. I went yeah. to googling. 
So I went Googling up community service. I got into FOI, men of, uh, not FOI, uh, uh, MOI, uh, 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 men of integrity or whatever, you know, and um, all of a sudden I just typed in poetry mm -hmm. and, then I, and then I said, I don't know nothing about poetry, yeah. but I, t I looked up Deaf Poetry Jam on YouTube and I, I liked it. So I said, you know what, let me go to an open mic night. I went to open mic night. It was called Speak No Evil uh, on a Wednesday. I went there. I liked the stuff that it was spitting. And then, he, and then I said, you know what, I'm going to go back to the drawing board and I'm going to come back next week and I'm going to do one on my own. Gotcha. I started writing that whole week. I started writing like poem after poem. But I had already started writing poetry way before that. Gotcha. But I didn't think that I was going to use it for anything. Gotcha. So I came back that next week. Uh, I saw it. I saw everybody standing outside. I drove back to the house. I no. said, damn, I'm not, I ain't getting out of the car. So I was discouraged that whole week. <laughs> I'm like, man, damn, man, I can't believe I ain't get up there, man. I'm scared. You know what I'm saying? Like, you a bitch, nigga. That's fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I'll call him, you know, I, was, I was taking it real Snack hard on, on myself. myself. So, yeah. the, so the following week, so the next week after that, I went back to Speak No Evil, uh, asked the people, can I get on stage? And those same people who ran that group, they, they're like my, they're my brothers and sisters now today, gotcha. still, still today. Those are the most rooted people that I have, some of the most rooted people I have in my life. So I went on stage. Did my thing and I had a standing ovation. Ever since then, it went from it went to the roof. And gotcha. the second time I ever did poetry, I won five hundred dollars. Yeah. And damn. the first time I did comedy, I won five hundred dollars. I, I signed up for a competition in Tampa. Yeah. So you always did um, comedy uh, since two thousand nine. Yeah. Oh. Okay. He trying to be on comedian. He trying to be on stage and he's scared to get on. Man, he he want to do the comedy thing, but he's scared to go on stage. I mean, you know, you gotta let that fear go, man. Like you talking to one of the, one of the, you know main people out there who were scared to expose the talent yeah. especially at a young age like growing up yeah. I used to see everybody playing football basketball yeah. you know singing rapping but I was kind of scared to kind of blend in I played football you know you know like little lead or whatever but when yeah. it came to high school I'm like oh, I'll leave that long you know yeah. I ain't big enough you know yeah. basketball I left that alone I didn't really rap because I didn't want nobody clowning me yeah. or whatever. You know, I I just kind of kept to myself. I was the introvert. Yeah. But I knew deep down inside it was a fire burning inside of me. I'm like, man, I can do that shit yeah. if, I, if I really put my mind to it. Yeah. I'm the type, you know, I don't feel like I'm the best at at everything. Yeah. But if you if you put me up to the test and you tell me I can't do something, I promise you, you're going to have a run for your money. And I'm going to be top five. Yeah. At least top five. You ain't gonna never forget about me. At least, yeah. so that's gonna be my job to make sure you never forget about me. Gotcha. Yeah. See, you know. see, I see you got this thing called like Waldo in the cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you please go into that? Cause I was like, damn, that shit go right into like it's it's so tr true. When I seen it, I kind of looked into it and, and researched it. Can you tell the people what that is and what kind of what it stands for? Waldo in the cut. All right, so <laughs> Waldo in the cut is a term that I made up because we got side niggas. We got a whole game of relationships and, yeah. you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, infidelity, infidelity and all that other stuff going yeah. on. So basically I didn't want, I heard Cat Williams say one time, I heard him say, uh, uh, for all you bitch niggas, you bitch niggas, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, you need to send us real niggas a thank you card. Yeah. Because, you know, we tired of being disrespected. Yeah. So it kind of stemmed from that, and it came from my experiences too and, and everybody else. I don't feel like – I feel like side niggas are pretty much – and we we can we talking we can talk women too or whatever yeah. you know what I'm saying we we can say whatever Waldina in the cut <laughs> you know say Waldina in the cut that's that's what they want to call it. You know, whatever whatever <laughs> but Waldo in the cut is basically the guy who's plotting on your girl who can be the male friend he can be the male man he can yeah. be the boss but he can either be in the way or he can be in the cut yeah. the whole idea of it is for him to be in the cut. And a lot of times, in most cases, some of the top walled on the cuts are male trainers mm -hmm. and best friend. Yeah, yeah. So the people close by and right there by yeah. watching us. Yeah, yeah, her yeah. Inside, yes. doing yeah. All yeah. So, the so, 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 so walled on the cut doesn't necessarily mean that you're trying to be Waldo. But you are. if you are <laughs> Waldo and you know exactly what you're doing, like say for example, if if if, if you are my girlfriend's 
if I'm your girl, if I'm your girl best friend, right? Right. And I know damn well I've been liking her since since I was eight years old. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you 24 right now, you're like, all right, man, this is my old lady. I've been with her for two years. Yeah. And every time I come around, you're like, man, there's something about him, man. Yeah. I can tell you something. And she's like, ah, it's my best friend. You're like, all right, you might you might be one type. You know, I'm gonna let it slide. I'm not gonna be insecure like that. I'm gonna let it slide. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna keep dapping him up. He's Waldo. If he know damn well that he wants your girl, he keeps shaking your hand. That's some bitch nigga shit. That's yeah. some Waldo on the cut type shit. Yeah. <laughs> nigga, you Waldo on the cut. Yeah. Waldo on the cut also can be, you're, you're classified as Waldo if, say for example, if old boy don't like your girl, but your girl have something on him. Yeah. yeah. If he knows that shit, he got to keep that shit, you know, cool, but he's still Waldo. He, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's not like on a first degree. Yeah. Like the like He's the Waldo who shook your hand yeah. and looked you in the eye and said, "What's up, nigga?" Yeah, you know what I'm wanna, yeah. I really really like your girl, but what's up? I'm yeah. here. I'm here right now. I'm putting all kind of salt in your game when you're fucking up. Yeah, I'm Waldo. <laughs> yeah, I seen that. I was like, God damn! Somebody. I've been thinking about this, but somebody really put a, a name on that motherfucker. Yeah, Waldo on the cut. Yeah, so so you know, Waldo don't necessarily. Uh, I feel like Waldo and, and side side niggas. Those the ones who really. They honor the game. Yeah, yeah. Like, like they like, look, man. They playing their yeah. position. Look, look, I'm here because I'm slinging wood. <laughs> I know you're married. I ain't here for nothing else. I ain't taking no pictures. I ain't doing none yeah. of the other shit. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Side niggas, they understand their positions and they supposed to respect the game, but you can't get mad if they disrespect the game as well. Yeah. Right. Because nigga, they are they savages. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But Waldo, they're they're in the cut because they never tell who they are. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Side niggas be like, look, yeah, I'm here. I'm I'm fucking up. What's yeah. up? What happened? Once you catch a side nigga, you know he's you, you can't even get mad like at the game. Waldo, Waldo is play. a real problem because he's hiding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's hiding. Side like nigga is plain view. Show his car. You can't get mad at a side nigga because he respect the game, or if he disrespect the game because he's savage and out here. He's yeah. a single male. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Same thing for a woman. She's single. The game is fucked up. We know how it go. <laughs> but Waldo is just something about a person who just don't open their mouth and yeah, expose yeah. it out. That, that, that's the person you got to watch the most. Yeah. the yeah. most quietest person in the room. Yeah, with her. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're hurt. Yeah. So faith, consistency, and hard work—that's something you created too. What uh, is that more like? Um, something you created after the YouTube and the videos and stuff. You just kind of made that to motivate yourself and motivate other people, or was that something? Well, yeah. Uh, well, one, one. Um, I noticed coming up, everybody had some type of mantra, like you know, Trey Song had "Yup," and you know what I'm saying. Or, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, everybody got got some type of mantra that they say. Yeah. And and everybody with the brand, um, they usually put their face on their brand. Yeah. I didn't want to put my face on my brand, and I and me coming into the game, I only wanted to just spread a message. I can respect that. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Appreciate. You ain't that. just trying to like make people laugh and look stupid all day. You like really trying to say something. With yeah, what you got yeah, going yeah. On, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, I just wanted to follow what I what I came into the game for. Like like me, I wouldn't be in the game if I couldn't uh respect what I what I was put here for. I feel like I was put here by God to, you know, to to be an inspiration for others, but also, yeah. you know, I'm only here just to just to just to help people evolve. Gotcha. Anything else? If if I, if I bring some bullshit to the table, just just act like you don't even see it. You know, because <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not perfect. Yeah. But at the same time, I wanted to create a brand because not everybody might not like me. Not my not, yeah, everybody yeah. might not listen to me. Yeah. But I want to create something that I know that people you know can live for and die for and execute and say, you know what, I can respect that. So yeah. I didn't want to put my face on faith, consistency, and hard work. So I thought of it. I put it together on December fourth, two thousand eleven, mm -hmm. and then boom, the video came out. And it's been a lifestyle ever since. Yeah, a lot of I don't people. have a tattoo on me, but people, hundreds of people have tattoos on them with FCHW, yeah. uh, you know, all over them. So, I mean. How you feel about that? Like, people just getting tattoos. You ain't got no tats, but everybody else, like, they got it with it on them. I mean, you, you know, if it? I get my first tat, I, I guarantee I, I, I get one probably, like, right here on my wrist, some, some, something like that with, like, a barcode. But yeah. I never told nobody to do that shit. <laughs> like I'm not mad. I, I appreciate y'all, but, but but the life, like I tell everybody, it's a lifestyle. It's beyond me. Like yeah. don't even think about me when y'all getting that tag. Maybe y'all are, yeah. But and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people out there that got tags that don't even tag my name. Yeah. That just don't even say anything. It's people out here with license plates, you know, all kind of stuff. Yeah. People 
I get DMs all the time of people who never even bought from my store. They making their own stickers and, and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> putting it in Guatemala. You know what Niggas in Guatemala putting it on their on their cars. I'm like, what the fuck? This shit Can crazy. So cut? that's how I know it's beyond me. So yeah. I don't, it, it, you know, I, I don't, you know, it ain't, it ain't, I'm cool. Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's cool for me because now I know that not only that I have a message that I live after I've transitioned, mm-hmm. but I also have a successful business that I can pass on to, you know, That's my family, about. whatever. So I'm a young CEO out here, a young entrepreneur, and it's just crazy how it all blew up, yeah, you know, before my eyes. Yeah. So, so it seems you got your hand in a lot of different things. What What else you have coming up <laughs> that you want to do? Well, or I'm re- branch out into. Well, really, it's really I've been trying to get this movie thing off the deal. Yeah. Off the off the table, like getting my own movie shot. Okay. So yeah. I mean, I've been at it, been at that that little process for about the past three, four years, as far as trying to raise money with it. You know, what I'm saying picking different series or picking different movies that I wanted to shoot, mm-hmm. taking it to different people. Don't even know I, I've taken my scripts to, you know, all kind of studios. That yeah. I've tried the Netflix thing. So that's the big big thing uh, that I've been trying to get off the the ground for the most part. Also, I've been touring a lot. Okay. So the touring is a big thing for me because. Mm-hmm. I need to get everybody to know that I'm on the road now. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I've been on the road for like the past year, I want to say, but yeah. really, really hard all for like all of 2018. Yeah, all right. of 2018, I've been everywhere from Houston, Toronto, uh, you know, New York, whatever, like LA, everywhere. I've everywhere. been everywhere, North Carolina, um, college to college. But yeah, just the movie thing, get my movie off the ground and just letting everybody know that I'm on this road. Can you go into what the movie's about or you kind of just... Oh, it's the sex. It's the sex and friendship slash relationship games. Okay. Uh, movie. I, uh, I don't Damn. know if, every, if people, if people, if y'all know about relationship game, it's accumulated over like I think five or five to eight million views in total. Yeah. Uh, sex and friendship too, uh, as well. I got like three different episodes of sex and friendship. So I combined that together and made that a movie. Some okay. people wanted the adopted white girl movie. We ain't doing that. You know, it's nothing <laughs> wrong with it, but you know, you know, we moving on to different things and. And, but I want people to get the sex and friendship and relationship game because they've been asking for that for years. Okay. I'm just trying to give it, I'm just trying to present it right. I don't want to shoot my movie on a low budget. I want to do it the right way. So when I do it the first time, everybody going to say, oh, we finally got it okay. and it's a success. Because I know once it gets out there, it's, it's, it's over. Yeah. But I want to do it the right way. And I don't want to dilute my script for anybody. I've even submitted my script to, you know, agents or whatever in and, mm-hmm. and certain studios. And they tell me, oh, if you take this part out, or, oh, no, 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 no. We ain't doing that. That ain't how I came into the game. Y'all came to me. Yeah. You know, people forget that it's all about you. Like, yeah, it's mainstream, but you are an individual. You are a, a, a business. And they can't, the mainstream can't operate without your business and without mm-hmm. you. So yeah. they came to me. That's all I was, gonna I ask was just you chilling. Because, <laughs> like, I, I knew, like, you, one of the ones, like, you, you down to earth, you already went through the industry, you kind of got the feel of it, and you still yourself at, in a way. Yeah. So how, how is the industry, though, like, from your point of view? Because I've never been in it. Yeah. I hear about it a lot. You in it. You know what I'm saying? What? Oh, you in it. For real? Oh, you in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you in it. Yeah. Wait, you I'm in it right now. You talking to me? You in it. What you yeah. mean? You ain't in it, bro. You in it. Uh, what you mean? What I'm saying is, like, how is that on, to my, on that level? Like, going to Cali, you know, that's what all the shit go down there as far as all the artists and everybody. Yeah. So, I know you've been there. You've done all these things. So, how is it as far as um the people? Like, is it really as bad as they say it is? Or is it kind of well, what you make well, it? What do you hear as far as as bad as they say it is? What, what do you hear? I'm just saying, like people getting shitted out of money. Oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna come on, bro. I, oh yeah, oh you, oh that's gonna happen. Yeah, especially if you don't come with your own. So you gotta come a game. Well, one when I went to LA, I had my own. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I still left with my own. I still have my own. Gotcha. So nobody ever bought me out. Yeah, no, you know I was just not yeah, not yeah, from you. I'm just saying, like, yeah, how, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna answer. It, it's just, it's just, um, I mean, it's like everyday street business in a way. It's grimy out there, yeah. you know, but you got to look at it how you look at the streets, how you look at life. You can't yeah. you can't just be thinking, oh, I'm going to L.A., you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to run into these niggas no more. <laughs> you know, I'm going to see white people in suits and, get, nigga, you going to get your head slapped still. Yeah. Like, they don't, you know what I'm saying? They don't care about you. They don't know you. Yeah. So I think people go into, you know, because, because, because people are so brainwashed from what they see on TV. Yeah. And the perception 
of what they think is reality. Yeah. Uh, I know that. Uh, they go out there and they think, you know what? Well, I've been around niggas that chop my head off all day, you know, who want to steal from me and kick in my house. But I'm going to go over there, live by the beach or whatever, and mm -hmm. not think that these people are not going to screw me over. Anyway, no. It's called, they don't call it a, a city of, of angels. Well, whatever they call it, the <laughs> city of angels for, for no reason. Oh, you know shit. what I'm saying? Uh, or the lost city of angels or something yeah. like that. Yeah, lost city of angels. Because niggas lost, lo lost their soul, lost their mind. You know what Damn. I'm saying? Like, I think it's something called, I think I might you be mispronouncing it really? wrong. I think it's called Skid Row. Skid Row, I, I think it. it's like a it's like a, a road full of like people who used to be uh, movie stars, mm -hmm. TV stars, mm -hmm. and a bunch of homeless people. Like, and it's over flooded over there. But LA is a, is a grimy place. If you ain't yeah. if you ain't going out there prepared and going out there like you know, if, for people who believe in God, yeah. if you ain't going out there with, with God looking over you, you know what I'm saying, staying prayed up and keeping the people close to you, yeah. and staying rooted and staying on your mission, you're gonna get lost. Rizza Islam, that's the name. Mm -hmm. How you how you linked up with him? <laughs> well, I met Rizza in uh, L.A. Uh, the mosque, I, I don't know what number. Yeah, <laughs> I, ain't much, I ain't gonna try. But I met him over there. I did a uh, it was a justice or else. It was during the time when like Trayvon, when I uh, Mike Brown had died and all the other stuff, and yeah. uh, you know. Uh, Walmart had that big thing going off. I got boycotting Walmart during that time. Yeah. So I did a spoken word at the mosque, and uh, I ran into a dude named Fahim Muhammad. He used to, you know, he, he a dope dude. He's in the FOI. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to be Michael Michael Jackson's security guard. Oh shit. But uh, he linked me up there. I did spoken word at the mosque, and then I just linked up with Reza, and then from then on, I think I ain't seen him in like a, a like eight months. And I think I had a question for him. It was about vaccinations and other stuff because I have a child mm -hmm. or whatever. So I, I wanted to ask him a certain um, uh, certain questions. And from then on, we just clicked up. And he been, you know, next right. to me ever since. He's been putting me on game. I've been putting him up on game. Yeah. You know, bringing him into the world of the internet. He's been bringing to me, bringing me in the world of, uh, of more uh, uh -oh. self-knowledge. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it, it works. It works. Yeah. I see he's a very knowledgeable dude. I gotta get. I definitely gotta get him on the show. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Talk to him. We gonna yeah, try yeah. To do something. He's here. He's in Florida. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I want to take it back to <laughs> where you from? <laughs> <laughs> Bradenton, Florida. Oh, okay. Bradenton, Florida, nine four one, Manatee County. You know what I'm saying? Right next to. If people don't know where that's at, it's right above Sarasota and right below Tampa. Oh. You know okay. what I'm saying? Right in the middle. Yeah. So yeah, it's all Tampa Bay. So I tell people Tampa Bay. So. Polk County, uh, you know what I'm saying, Tampa, St. Pete, Sarasota, Hills, Hills, Barrow, and all that shit, Tampa Bay. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They all belong. It's all the same thing. Yeah. Damn near. Oh, okay. Man, you, so, uh, you, you huh? tripping. Wait, going back. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I want to know. <laughs> that's, I his baby. know. That's, that's his, that's his ta hashtag. Where <laughs> you from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For real, because everybody would be wanting to know. Yeah, they yeah. just know they artists, though. They, you know who. You an actor or you a comedian or yeah yeah, yeah. you something but where you from where you know people people yeah. want you to act that uh yeah see your background on yeah, that. I know <laughs> no, it's, it's good for them no man yeah, yeah I already know okay. yeah there you go oh, so I feel like that's we can cut it dub you know if that's what it is you got something to say any advice to the upcoming um uh, comedian actor, comedian poet and you can sing too can't you. Y'all be doing that man, too. I ain't I, mean, I got, you albums, same, man. I got yeah. albums, all kind of stuff, man. I got albums, understanding my flaws. I ain't shit yet. I got <laughs> albums, all kind of stuff. Yeah, you short like, films. You got all type of shit. Probably. You like Kevin Gates? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm little, and I respect Kevin Gates a lot. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's why I, I respect him a lot. But uh, I came up with eating ass first. I eat that. I don't take pride in that. But <laughs> that nigga said I eat ass, nigga. I started that shit. I started the term saying that. Yeah. I ain't say started eating that. That's what I'm saying. Started I started that term. Everybody was like, "Damn, kept no, nah, nigga." I started that shit. Okay. Look it up on Facebook names. 2011. I said that shit, and the shit blew up. That's why the shit got so many views. Shout out Kevin Gates, though. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Uh, anybody coming up into the game, it doesn't matter what field you're in. Just make sure you love it first. Yeah. And if you don't love it, then you're never gonna respect it, mm -hmm. and you're only mm -hmm. gonna, you know, some people. I believe in gift and talent. Yeah. Like I believe that, and, and and talented people can get money, and gifted people can get money. The money is gonna come as long as you put the work in yeah, or the man. consistency. The FCHW period, like <laughs> it's the money gonna come. But the problem is, 
it, you know, when you have people that come into the game and they know that's not something that they truly would live for or die for or not passionate about. And you can tell, especially if you're passionate about something, you know when you're passionate about something, when somebody walk into the room, they do the same thing you do, mm -hmm. and you can tell they ain't got, they don't respect it or whatever. You're like, oh, man, get this person out of the room. Man, this man don't even care about the art, man. Yeah. This man just playing. And, and uh, you know, I always tell people, you're only going to go as far as your talent going to take you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And uh, there are some talented people out there that go way past uh, people that are gifted mm -hmm. because gifted people, they stand in their own way. Mm -hmm. They stand in their own way because, because they know that they're so good at it that sometimes they feel like they don't have a challenge or when they do hit that challenge, you know, um, they just don't, they just don't put the work in. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. They don't put the FCW in, but there are talented people out there that say, you know what? I bet I can do the same thing they do. Yeah. And they might be better at it because they beat on that horse way longer than you. And, and they respect the FCW more. They respect the faith, consistent, hard work more. They may mm -hmm. not love it more than you, mm -hmm. but because they at it longer than you and, and, and they're respecting the actual, you know, the actual uh, uh, right. work they put into it, that's why they're ahead. So we live in a world full of talented people that's running the world and a world full of gifted people that's running the world. And I think the gifted have a problem with the talented sometimes because they know deep down inside they don't really fuck with it. Yeah. But you can't, you gotta respect it because, yeah. you know, beat, if you can't, you beat them. Yeah. You beat them or join them. Entertainment, entertainment.